Okay, it's on the block, so we will start this meeting. Um, please know that the meeting will be streamed, uh, so it is posted to the town website at the conclusion of the meeting. Uh, is there any disclosure or pecuniary interest? Okay, hearing none, we have a public hearing this evening. So we have a public hearing tonight to hear uh, consent, three consent applications, the 0119, 0219 and 0319. And the purpose of the severances are to create three lots, 1.25 hectares, 1.06 hectares, and 1.05 hectares with access to the Spanish River. And the zone bylaw amendment application Z03-19 um, with the purpose to change the zoning on the affected lands from waterfront to waterfront residential in an exception to section 3.9 of the zoning bylaw 2368-11. The applicant is Jill and Paula Lavadere um, with the agent uh, DS Dolan and to, uh, Mr. Dave Dolan. The location of the property um, affected by the applications um, it has a legal description of merit concession 5, law 11, parcel 6460. So today we've received um, written submissions from uh, some very residents and yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do now have Sarah here from Jail Richards. Uh, Sarah, I'm going to invite you to explain um, the information on the planning we're going to be providing in our package. So uh, I believe we have our staff report or our recommendation available to you. Um, just to kind of summarize, a proposed development of these three rural residential lots for um, seasonal residential uses. We are of the opinion that these are not consistent with the provincial policy statement and do not conform to the town's official plan. Um, primarily with regard to the proposed water access um, only form of development. And as such, we do not recommend any applications uh, for approval. We have um, reviewed the applications, uh, reviewed the provincial and municipal policy. Um, as well, we have met with the applicant and um, were able to review the lands um, at a site visit this summer to get a better understanding of what was being proposed, um, the topography and the proposed access in particular for those lands. Um, so the applications were submitted um, and reviewed on the basis that the three residential lots would be um, accessed via water, so via the Spanish River. Um, in this location, we would note that the um, grade from the river to the lands themselves is quite steep, um, rising approximately uh, 180 meters in elevation to 200 meters in elevation, so approximately a 20 meter or um, 60 foot change from the river to the lands themselves. Um, and that's on the basis by which the lands are proposed to be um, constructed and then accessed kind of in perpetuity for seasonal residential development. Um, so we do have some pretty significant concerns with respect to that type of access. There is um, a trail uh, that extends along the property itself, which is currently um, being used. And um, because of that existence, kind of on the western end of the unopened municipal road allowance, which is to the west of 2nd Avenue. Um, because of that development on, along the trail, we have some concerns that um, that may be used for the development, construction, and potential access of these um, three proposed lots. And that is not following along with the policies provided in the provincial policy statement, nor the town's uh, municipal official plan. Um, just with respect to some of the policies, so the provincial policy <laughs> statement indicates that 
development in a rural area can be supported if it's compatible with the rural landscape and can be sustained by rural service levels. So low density residential development um, on private services typically is a good thing for the rural area. Um, however, as I mentioned, it's really the access um, that is um, causing us some uh, difficulty. So we can't recommend the lots to be constructed via the unopen road allowance, as this does not conform to the policy which permits development only where infrastructure is planned, available, or avoids unnecessary expansion of services. And by potentially using that unopened road allowance and trail, it puts pressure on the town um, to expand and provide access via that area. So that's uh, contrary to the provincial policy statement. Um, in terms of the town's official plan, these lands are designated rural and waterfront designation. And um, that land use, those designations do permit low density residential uh, development and outdoor recreation uses, again, on private services, so private water and wastewater. Um, however, it's, it's again the water access um, that we feel does not meet um, the official plan policies with regards to providing access. The, the townships, um, sorry, the town's policies do talk about um, not encouraging unopen road allowances as minor extensions to facilitate severances, and that um, severances can be permitted on the basis of water access only if there's confirmed secure mainland access and parking and provision of that that access is going to be viable. So again, just because of the, uh, the proposed water access um, and the topography of those lands and the pressure that this might cause to have um, the unopened portion of Second Avenue as well as potential extension of municipal services, um, mainly the road in that area, we feel that the, the proposed development is not in conformity with the town's official plan. So I think I've covered kind of all the main points. Um, and again, mostly that uh, the development isn't consistent with the provincial policy statement and does not conform to the government. So we cannot recommend the application to our approval. Are there any questions? The extension of the uh, municipal road, how long would that have to be? So there is a sketch um, on the figure one, kind of shows the subject lands. And you can see that uh, the unopened road, so Second Avenue ends. The unopened road allowance continues for approximately 200 meters before um, meeting the subject parcel. However, then there's also kind of a, a trail or an access over the lands for quite some distance before the proposed severed lots, which are at the very western end of the property. Okay, so you. in addition to, um, uh, so the township, the town's plan, official plan also, so indicates that water access can be a, a viable level of opportunity for our development. So those areas where you might fly in or the slope, slope might be a bit, um, not as steep as in this case. Um, but the town's official plan is also very clear on where you are going to have severances where they're accessed over land and not via water access, that it needs to be fronting on an open year-round maintained municipal road. Um, and we don't have that in this case either. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We may have some more questions for you. Which is, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more information. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask either the applicant or the applicant's agent or representative to speak next on this issue. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. I am uh, Gilles Olivier, the subject to the property. Okay, thank you. I'm 
applying for rezoning. Um, Dave Dorland, um, he's been working with me. Um, just a brief, and, and Barry Colson as well, sorry. A little nervous, I've never done this before, so I'll try to make a few jokes here and there. Um, I'm a, I was born and raised in Spanish, just a little west of here. Um, small town boy, uh, 1990, moved to Sudbury uh, to chase a career. Um, everything's going well there, but still wanted the small town uh, release uh, from the big city. I know it's not Toronto, a big city, but it is fairly big from where I come from. Um, we ended up purchasing property in 2007 on the Spanish River in Massey, a nice little uh, 14 acre lot that we use year round off the grid. We enjoy the fishing, the boating, the fact that we're not tied to one particular lake. We can, we can take off in the morning and finish off the evening in a little current by the uh, John Island will go camping there. It's a, and the same things are available to these lots here in Espanola. There's no limitations. Uh, up, up river you can't because of the dam, of course, but down the river, you know, you can go as far as you want. Um, I looked at the, the property in Massey and I, I said, you know, maybe one day I'll get bored and I'll feel like developing myself. So I have. Uh, I passed it along to my lovely wife sitting in the back here. And I said, if you ever see property on the Spanish River, I said, let's uh, let's look at buying it. And well, she found some. So we, uh, I did my research and, and at that time, the, um, the people uh, from the town here were really helpful, giving me all the bylaws and everything like that. And it, it, I said, at, at, at worst, uh, I should be all right with this investment because I will meet the criteria. I have a public launch for water access. I have a public launch which is less than a mile away upriver. It's maintained by the, by the government. I have launches all the way down the Spanish River that have no bylaws for overnight parking. Massey's one of them. Spanish is a huge where they allow people to park there to, because they camp on the water and so on and so forth. And when it comes to private parking, if it's such a big deal, I have 14 acres that allows anybody to park, that I would allow them to park at my property in, in Massey. Um, so we went ahead and we bought, and, and let me just say, the town was quite nice to deal with back then. And I said, I'm not, you know, I wasn't, I, had, I didn't have a bad feeling about dealing with the town because it was quite open. And, and still today, um, Paula Rock is a, is a godsend. She's, she's just wonderful to deal with. And, um, I, I know that there's a road and, and Dave is going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, we, we bought the property and we sat on it. We didn't do anything for quite a while because we were building up our property in Mass at some point, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's West. Um, we, uh, we didn't do nothing and, and I think one of the first visits we took um, we, we bought some KFC and come here and we went to the property and it was finally ours and here we go. We, we have 84 acres of waterfront property and it's pretty nice. And we were greeted by a, a resident, which I, I have no issue with that. Um, I made myself clear that if, if I wanted this to be a road and be treated as a road, I wouldn't stop people from walking the trail, driving the trail, but it's not a trail. I should get that out of my mind. It's a road. It's it's big trucks can go down that road. Um, it's quite. It's in great shape. Um, so I I put up with my lawyer's advice. I put up some signs saying no trespassing without consent. And I handed out blank consents to everybody. I said if you go go ahead, you know you can hand them out to other people that use it. I have people that snowshoe the trail on a regular basis around the property and that. And I, I don't want to stop anybody because it's a road and it's, it's beautiful land and it should be there for everybody to, to enjoy. Um, in the future, I'm looking to get it uh, an FTIP property, a managed forest tax incentive program. So I will build trails and benches and for people to come and visit the, the waterfront and uh, the wildlife. Um, 
think maybe I'm rambling on here, so I'll just wrap it up. Um, I know there's concerns from the neighborhood, and I'm not going to throw mud around. I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Um, but I was a little upset that there was uh, signatures on there uh, stating why isn't the bylaw officers keeping an eye on the road because it's a non-motorized road, uh, no motorized vehicle, there's a sign there, which kind of doesn't fit the, the profile, but um, but yet these concerned citizens are using the road to bring their motor homes and store it at my neighbors. So is it a road or is it not a road? Is it a road for me, for other people, or just for certain individuals? So, um, I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else speaking on your behalf as well? Please. Thank you, Richard. My name is Dave Gordon. <coughs> um, I've had private practice as a surveyor and planning consultant for about 40 years in Sudbury. Um, I rarely appear in this council. Mostly in Sudbury, I've made about 3,000 applications over the last 40 years. To help people develop property. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Polson and I have some alternative opinions as to um, ways in which we can make this uh, development proceed. Uh, it's interesting to know this is the only application you've had this year. Um, maybe that's an indication that we're too strict about some things. We want development from north, and I'll speak to some of those. Uh, aspects of the official plan uh, and the provincial policy statement. But we hope to give um, this council and uh, an opportunity to consider the applications in a more positive manner, um, providing you with some opportunity to, um, um, to feel confident about the one creation. Now, um, I have to thank Sarah because uh, she's actually given us an alternative uh, uh, recommendation to deal with in her staff report. It doesn't usually very often happen to me. I usually have to go through something else for those. But she's in, in the Dale Richards report, she's stated chapter and verse of various policies, and I think. Um, we can place some different emphasis on certain aspects of uh, contents of that report, report and provide an alternative um, solution to allay the town of its fears, um, or perhaps misgivings, maybe not, uh, about creating three more lots for us in, uh, on the beautiful Spanish River. I have some handout material. Um, Your Worship, if I may be uh, allowed to. Yes, you may. <laughs> it's kind of a close and different counselor, so maybe they can share a few. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You got two here anyway. So. <laughs> Your Worship, with your forgiveness, I'd like to put two other maps on the table. They're little bigger ones, and I'd like to more quickly. No, I'll explain any documents later. Let's just go with the ones we have. Um, as I mentioned, when we review the staff report, we would like to propose some alternative interpretations and solutions that would be more in line with some of the more supportive aspects of the OP and the financial policy statement. If we just looked at things a little differently. 
and provide a um, common sense and practical solution to encourage some form of economic activity in the community. The race creates some lots that people don't pay taxes on and enjoy um, our northern lifestyle. Without any sort of financial uh, burden on the municipality. So your worship, um, the first document I'd like to go over is uh, a view of of the <coughs> property that shows it's a very nice big wooded area. Uh, the three lots are located on what's called Google, Google calls it Second Avenue, but it's not. Um, gives you a sense of the property, how uh, wonderful it is from the respect of enjoying a uh, form of tourism and life in the north. The second document that I'd like you to have a look at is an overlay of these lots on a 1928 aerial photo. Now this 1928 aerial photo is of considerable importance um, because it demonstrates um, that the access road, it's been called in the staff report anywhere from a trail to a, a road allowance. And I want to provide you with documentary evidence that this is, this is a public road, it is an open public road, and it's vested in the municipality. But we don't have to worry about that because we're going to come up with Mr. Fulton and the solicitor is going to come up with it or is going to present you a solution for how the municipality can be relieved of its concern over, uh, I think it's mentioned seven or eight times in the staff report, pressure on the municipality to improve the road. I'll let him speak to that. But if you, if you look at this document of, of this, this gray map, the larger scale one is also in front of you, you see that these, this is from 1928. <clears throat> the roads have been there since 1909. People farmed this area, they settled this area. And <clears throat> the other uh, document that's in the, in the file is a crown grant. And that's this document. If you have a look at it, counselors. And this document explains that there were low KTs on these properties since 1909. They're pre grant This road's been in, used to provide access and enjoy these properties for 110 years. So did they call it road? I'm not so sure that the municipality didn't know one day I maintain it, but that's not the issue right now. We, we don't have much activity. There's not enough tax base there to justify um, um, <coughs> maintaining the road. As um, <coughs> Jill has many, indicated, it is a substantial road. The um, uh, fire department been down there. It can provide, it, it's a good thing for these applications because it provides access emergency services. So the, the, the grant document that you see shows that it was the property to the west was registered on title in, two, in 1913 to a free grant settler, Yeoman, who was located on the property since 1909. And furthermore, in that patent document, it says, reserves any public or colonizer Road, colonization roads crossing the said lands at the date of the past. So all of these properties along the road, right from the paved end of Second Avenue, um, were roads that existed prior to the patent. So the bed of the road was reserved for the crown. Now the municipal act now says that if, if there's a road in your municipality, you own it. But it also uh, provides criteria whereby you may or may not, you can not be required to upgrade. We're not looking to upgrade this road, and as I say, Mr. Fulton will talk a little bit more about that later. But I want to go through um, 
um, one other item. Although we've been hearing this a lot, the slope is not very good for development. Healthy is through the bottom. The sloping is only by the uh, shore of the river. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too. The lots have been approved for development by the health unit. There's plenty of nice land up there to develop these lots. We have had some letters of objection, and I think um, we may be hearing from some of those people, and we may speak to those letters of objection as, as the meeting goes on. But um, the, some of the things that I'd like to speak about in the staff report um, with, with, with the Commission, the Worship, and members of Council. Um, Provincial policy statement uh, contains sections that, for example, in the first paragraph on page three, development that is compatible with rural landscape and is sustained by rural service levels should be promoted. And we seem to find ways to not promote this problem. And I think we have the answer why it should be promoted and supported. Not entirely thanks to Sarah's alternative recommendation for your consideration, but we'll deal with that. Um, section 1.1.5.5 indicates the development should be appropriate with infrastructure which is planned, available, and avoid unnecessarily expensive services. Lots, uh, proposed lots will utilize private services that are sufficiently large and appropriate for the rural area. Um, The report doesn't seem to support promotion of the rural lot creation here and, and waterfront lot creation, notwithstanding some sections of the provincial policy statement. Now, Mr. Pulse will get into this in a little more detail, but um, <clears throat> we do not recommend that the, in this next paragraph, we do not recommend that the lots be permitted to construct by an unopened road lounge. This does not conform to the policy, this is provincial policy statement, which permits development only where infrastructure is planned, available, and um, avoid the necessary expansion of services. The infrastructure is there. It proves that there, if, if water access, which these lots have, is necessary, they have that facility. Um, and if we decide to use the road, because it is a public road, it can never be stopped up. Um, it, it's not municipally maintained and we're not asking for it to be maintained. Um, <clears throat> so that the, um, the road is available and we're going to provide for you some comfort that it won't require any expansion of service. Under the Northern Growth Plan section of the report, um, it does have uh, some, some positive supporting um, comments saying that the uh, Northern the Growth Plan for Northern Ontario says that we should support emerging priority economic factors such as tourism. These lots on the Spanish River are uh, will be in demand, they will provide an opportunity for tourism, they will provide an opportunity for residents to enjoy waterfront property. There are two words in this, in the staff report that, that uh, cause me some problems. One of them is the word only. Now, in my experience, the only aspect of, of providing water access is because many of these rural seasonal developments are on private roads that wander through the bush and finally get there. And the difficulty with that is 
you don't have legal access. These lots have two means of legal access. One is water access. That affords the legal access by one means, and it's why only the word, I don't understand why the word only is in there. If we can develop the lots through water access, why would we <laughs> seek uh, to restrict them just because we also have uh, a open public road along the backs of the, the lots? That road's been there for 110 years, as I said. So the, we seem to dwell on the word only in the in the in the staff report, planning report. I don't think it needs to be there. We do have legal access by water, and <laughs> there's a comment that keep the comment keeps coming up. The store shore is too steep. Well, there are two places at least on that property, and one on the most westerly lot, where you can drive a truck right to the river. Who has the professional qualifications to say whether or not the shore is too steep or not? I think all of you have been to the lots, for example, in Sudbury, maybe on Mackey Avenue, or some of the lots even along the French River, or along the Spanish River, where the shore is really steep. That's up to the developer. He can find ways to build it up there. If if it's insisted that we use water access only, I think it's crazy and impractical, but there are flexibility provisions in official plan policy. We can use those provisions. We don't have to put a caveat on the, on the alternative recommendation that says, hey, you've got to bring all your stuff to these lots um, to construct the, the, the seasonal residences. Just because the word only is in that OP policy, I think we can apply some flexibility provisions and, and, and allow an alternative proposal that uh, the proposal is too short. short. <coughs> um, there will be some other matters that I'd like to speak to. Um, I, I think um, the proposal will now. Um, make his presentation. I understand there will be opportunities for the public to speak. And um, I feel it's kind of unusual for uh, us to speak with notes on whatever uh, comments are made by the public. Um, other areas are my comments, members of council is my comment, and it's also more carry on. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. So my name is Greg Olson. I've uh, practiced at UN Espanola for 43 years. I've had the privilege and pleasure of representing the town of Espanola as its municipal solicitor for 15 years in the early 70s, or mid 70s and 80s. And I just had some short comments that, that I'd like to make. And it's really in regards to uh, Ms. Burroughs' uh, alternate recommendation to council, which is Found on the page six of the report. And I would ask you to turn to page seven of the report because uh, the ultimate recommendation is if the council <coughs> agrees to commit these severances, then there should be some conditions attached to it. And uh, on page seven, there's a condition that, uh, number five, where a notice on title will be registered to say, uh, to read from the report, take notice of this lot of water access only, and the town does not recognize this lot as having any road access for construction or operation of the lot. If you agree with Mr. Dorland's uh, presentation, this, this is an open public road. Uh, I, I don't believe it's within the the municipal jurisdiction to post a sign and say nobody can use this road for, for whatever reason, construction or otherwise. Uh, it's the only way you might do something is to pass a bylaw to close the road around. I mean, that's within your jurisdiction. But over my 43 years of practicing, I've seen and come across a document called a no demand for services agreement to register on title. And the man of the 
why not we just have a handout for, yeah. for everybody. This is just a precedent of a document that, that sorry, uh, it's called the No Demand for Municipal Services. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> and it's just a precedent. I, I have a couple of different precedents with different wording. But when I read the report, there are uh, seven, uh, seven areas where the report mentions that uh, by approving this, this may put pressure on the town to increase the level of services. And uh, it appears to me in reading the report that that is a, that's a very important aspect of the planner's decision not to support this application because uh, if they're not going to use the water access, then they may use the road, and this is going to put pressure on the town. And I'm, I'm going to go through the report and explain. But if you take a minute and look at this at this precedent, uh, this has been used in exact similar situations where the municipality is faced with a severance application where the property doesn't have a publicly maintained roadway and uh, you can you can see by the by the reading of it the the owner signs an agreement like this it's registered on the title so anyone buying these properties would know that there's no municipal services you can't demand snow plow garbage removal fire protection if you can, if, if there's a, no limit as to what restrictions you can put on this. And that, that would, uh, in my view, address, if we turn to uh, the report, the first time, the first time uh, the issue is mentioned is dealing with the provincial policy statement on page three of the report, where at the, uh, it's not a paragraph heading, but you know, it states in the report, permitting development and or construction of three additional dwellings in this area places additional pressure on the town to open the road and provide services to the development of this area. That's under the provincial policy statement. Uh, I would respectfully submit that an agreement like this would address that issue. Uh, the next time uh, it's, it's stated in this report is uh, under the growth plan for Northern Ontario, where it's noted in the report, as noted above, the proposed location and access to the lots is not appropriate for development and does not represent an optimized use of existing infrastructure. Rather, it could cause, cause pressure on the town for additional services in the rural area. Therefore, we are of the opinion that the application is not consistent with the growth plan for Northern Ontario. Again, I would would recommend that an agreement like this would address that concern. On page four, <coughs> at the top, it's mentioned again uh, in the second paragraph. This additional pressure to use this unopened road allowance is incompatible with the rural development envisioned by the OP. We're not asking for any additional services. This agreement will address those concerns. On page five of seven, just at the top, first paragraph, by permitting development and or construction of three additional dwellings in this area, additional pressure on the town to increase the level of service and open the road to service development in this area will be the outcome of the approval. Uh, it's our respectful opinion that that's not going to be the case. We will, we will register this agreement on title and we won't be requesting any uh, services from the municipality. The fifth time it's mentioned is uh, in relation to the policy, your policy number 20. Provides that new lots should be created in areas only where an uneconomic extension of a, any major service is not required. But again, we're not requiring. Uh, as noted above, the location of the existing unopened municipal road allows at the end of 2nd Avenue in the current trail. We, we take exception to that. And the word trail. Access in the area provided the potential to access these lands in this manner. This additional pressure to use this unopened road allowance is incompatible with the rural development. <coughs> Again, the same comment. 
uh, with respect to section 2. Point, section 2.2.3. Again, there's a notation. The OP policy provides that there is no obligation on the town to maintain or repair private roads, provide services, and the town may not be able to provide emergency services. As such, the OP does not support the access of the lots by a private road. This is not a private road. This is a, this is a, a public road since the 1900s. Last paragraph on that page, or in this section. While the OP allows some rural development to be permitted where rural services are appropriate, it is our opinion that the location of the subject lands and the proposed water only access will place undue pressure on the municipality regarding access to second energy. Again, I would respectfully submit that a no demand for municipal services agreement would address all the planners' concerns, and uh, we would ask you to enter a favorably on this application. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I do understand that there's a lot of people in the, the gallery that would like to speak on this motion. So, uh, you may approach the podium one at a time. Please state your name. Um, and feel free to come up. Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Brady. I'm a taxpayer. I have been for around 30 years here, I guess. Off and on, I have moved away and then come back. Um, we're just, uh, as a taxpayer, we are concerned, and especially we live on that section of Second Street. And yes, we are concerned of what's going on up there. Uh, and the reason we got in this location is because it was a very quiet road. And now we see something's happening there. And I guess we aren't sure, you know, like, is this a typical, and, and listen, we aren't experts on zoning and rezoning, okay? So, uh, but we can identify, we have uh, over a dozen names put together uh, with a list of concerns for 19 names. We maybe kind of go through them kind of fast here tonight. Just identify that they, they are some of our concerns here. Uh, I don't quite understand the, it seems to be that We've already done the clearing, we've done the survey, and we've done the, uh, all the details there, but we haven't got a zone. So isn't that kind of a, a cart ahead of the horse? Or is this typical? Maybe I know Dale Richards could, uh, is this a typical way of, uh, of doing work? Normally, uh, you know, you get a permit, you, 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 you do your work, your paperwork first, and then you do your, uh, not after, you know, the cows have already left the farm. Anyway, it's okay, so listen, uh, so my name's Mike Brady, okay, and we got Fran Lewis, he's another neighbor in the same area as us, okay, and we have uh, a few uh, neighbors here that uh, would maybe like to uh, say a few words to me, and maybe even on the way as we go through some of these things. I guess our first one here is, what's the long-term plans for this area? Okay, we don't quite understand that. Is it going to become another trailer park? We've already got one trailer park in uh, town. Is that is that what's going to happen there now? I mean, what I, what we have up there right now, we have some shacks, I guess. I don't know. I just from the Dale Richards report and photographs, we've already moved in some trailers. So, what's the, what's the, now? And I was always under an impression that a colonization road was not to have any increase in traffic except for the people that are living there. But the lawyers will probably dispute that. Okay. All right, uh, what type of dwellings uh, are to be built? Are the trailers going to be uh, dwellings? How many uh, now and proposed? We presently have a uh, trailer park in Eskimo in Lee Valley. Uh, we do not need another one. Okay. There is clearly a display sign at the end of the second street pavement stating no motorized vehicles beyond this point. Yet I have witnesses vehicles going past this and the increase in traffic, especially during the hunting season right now. Quite a few increase. Okay. Now I guess you know like uh, I have a uh, just a photograph of the uh, sign basically stating no motorized vehicles there. So we I guess we don't go by the signs now. And I mean, if that's the case, you know, 
then it, because if there is trucks going up and down there all the time now as a result of that. Okay, and, and and listen, I understand they've made an investment, but they have to understand us. We're neighbors at the end of Second Street. There, we pay taxes, and we should. We are concerned with what's with what's going on, with what's going to be developed there. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, now you know where's the bylaw officer? You know, I mean, if that's if they are violating our our. our uh, Policies here, then should we not be taking action on that? And if you take a look at the first page of uh, Dale Richards' report, they do refer to, I think it's number one here, that we're already in violation. I think it's the second and last paragraph. It should be noted that these uses are not submitted in the zoning by the area computers right now. No, is that correct, sir? So then why are we? What's going on? I, I don't quite understand that then. Why are we already in violation of the uh, policy right now? I'm going to ask you to make a presentation, but okay. we refrain from asking questions. Oh, okay. Today, yes, okay. It's okay right. to Sorry. present your questions. Yes. So think that right. council can follow and, up on. and the question we've already submitted to everybody uh, stated the 26th. <laughs> so, okay, let me I'll just go through the question. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, uh, where is the uh, bush uh, brush and the trees in place uh, from the initial clearing? We know that clearing has been taking place over the past few months. Uh, has there been any environmental assessment concerning clear cutting debris, disposal filling in natural water roads, wildlife, etc.? Uh, number seven, the embankment. Uh, it is, you know, around 68 feet plus or minus. Okay, uh, I don't see you bringing up a, a trailer. Or material up that kind of height. I'm an engineer, and that's not the way, and that's not while the material is getting in there right now. The road is being used to do that. Okay. I didn't understand uh, number eight, maybe uh, Geo Richards can tell that uh, on the uh, minutes or the notice of meeting there that uh, uh, an exception to section 3.9 of the zoning bylaw 2368 11. I don't understand that. What that is referring to. Okay. Uh, number nine. Uh, there person. Now, what happened here actually is that uh, we put the list, this list together back about a month and a half ago, and then we got Jill Richard's report. So they put this over, over duplicating a few here actually. Because they, uh, they, you know, it's a trailer on the property, is this legal? Uh, over the past week. Number 10, uh, will, this, will this proposal result in increased traffic on Second Street? We personally do not have sidewalks on this section. But, and there's a big difference on this section of Second Street versus uh, up to, uh, uh, what's that, gate, or the, <coughs> the end of Queen's area there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a big difference. So, uh, the road is much narrower. We don't have sidewalk. Some places we don't have uh, street lights. And not a problem the way it is right now, but if we increase the traffic in that area, then yes, we'll have to do something there. So there will be an increased cost to uh, Espinal. Um, there's many children in the street uh, that will be affected by the increased traffic. So lots of times you'll see three or four kids walking down with a dog, uh, and, and there's a, a, a child care uh, a place just up the street that looks at you. So I mean, there's concerns about that. The section of 2nd uh, Street west of Park Street was not designed for heavy traffic. It is very narrow, increased traffic deteriorates the road, as does any heavy equipment used to start the proposed construction. Number 13, uh, what about the increased traffic on the sensitive Spanish River, if approved? Has this been investigated? Will there be additional streetlights? So we raise this attention. Number 15, we, uh, we have heard uh, baby and bears taking place there. Uh, we've been there since 2015. Uh, I think uh, 2015, I think we had one bear in our backyard. This year we had four bears in the backyard. So there's baiting and bears, so there's hunting there right now. It's increased and something that we'll have to discuss most likely now is that should there not be a buffer zone between a hunting area and a resident area? I, you know, how far does the bullet travel? You know, it's just something to think about there that we'll have to do something on that. 
Um, number 16, it should be noted that the three lots that have been requested for severance will fall under Schedule A. Is that correct? Uh, with no hunting, will hunting be allowed on uh, both sides of these lots? Number 17, if, uh, if these three lots are severed, what about the septic systems? 18, um, waste management services, recycling emergency services. I mean, those are, what, what are you going to be doing with your garbage? What are you going to be doing with your recycling material? And then the other big item here is, is uh, fire protection. If you have a, if you're cutting and burning there and you start a fire, especially in the middle of summertime, we're a little bit concerned because you know what's happening in Canada with fires uh, around town, okay? And, and, and yeah, I, I don't I totally agree with the uh, optimist discussion on a, on the trail. I mean, it's a, it's it basically, yeah, it, it, I guess it's called a road, a colonization road, but it's a trail pushed through the bush by horse and buggy by the start off. And it has not been developed since then. And if you've got a fire up there, how are you going to take your fire trucks up through there? Even the width of the road is not that. Okay. Um, so anyway, just a little last note here, basically, uh, uh, we do understand, uh, sign do not agree with the approval of this amendment as per our concerns just as above. We feel a AC approval is not in the best interest of people living along this corridor. As a taxpayer, we urge that the town council uh, consider the quality. And we, uh, you know, the report that was done by Dale Richards was very, very well done. We agree with the session. Uh, my name is Grant Lewis. Um, I just have a point of clarification. Um, Mr. Polson mentioned that there would be no requirement or request for additional services to those three lots, mentioning fire, waste, and emergency vehicles. So what will happen then? Surely the fire department, would they not be allowed to go up if there were a fire on that property? Would there be private waste collection? And uh, the Spanish River is sensitive enough. I don't think uh, having three septic systems on top of a large steep incline to the river, um, it, it, I don't like it. Um, we have no idea what would happen. Um, also, um, Talking about the hunting, I know in rural areas there is there is hunting allowed, if I'm not mistaken. So if these three lots are approved, as we mentioned in point 16, so the rest of the lot is hunting allowed, or is there uh, uh, a buffer zone from those three lots where they are not allowed to hunt, and then they're allowed to hunt? Uh, again, we're not the experts; we just have concerns. Um, thank you very much. Thomas. Okay, just one other item, I suppose, is that now we're at the table to discuss these three. Are we going to be back here a year from now for another three or four more? No, no, no. And I guess that's the question. Where's the long, what's the long term plan here? And as a town of Eskimo, we should know that. Because people are buying houses in certain areas because of, 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 the, of the plan. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank for you. listening. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this issue? Hello. My name is James McKay. I'm a taxpayer. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to be brief. I just have one concern as a taxpayer that lives in that neighborhood. And <clears throat> it is uh, specifically for the children. We have a lot more children on that street than I noticed in my call the 15 years I've lived there. And um, as Mr. Brady said, the bear population definitely has increased um, in my years there. Up until two years ago, we never saw a bear in my area. And again, we live in Northern Ontario, there are bears around, but that, you know, that's changed. Um, we hear coyotes and wolves every night now. Very, very near. We used to hear them occasionally years past in the distance, but they're approaching town. Um, and again, I get it, we live in the north and this is a part of the north, but we have small children. And um, 
my concern is with these animals coming into town. Um, they play on the street, they're outside having a good time in the bush, and um, something bad potentially will happen with this change. Thank you. Good evening, Your Worship, uh, Deputy Mayor, Councillors, Municipal Staff, and Fellow Citizens. My name is Bob Towns. Um, my wife, Ann, and I are residents of Espanola, going back to 1994. Uh, we currently own the property identified down at 1072nd Avenue, which is the last properties, residential properties on 2nd Avenue. Uh, before I, before I go into any, anything further, I will say for the record that, uh, and it's important to note that we have no animosity towards anyone and no ill will. We've had the opportunity to meet the resident owners or the property owners, I should say, down past our residents, uh, Jill and, and Clint both. They're both here this evening. And we've got to know them over the last eight to 10 years and, and know them as very nice people and we get along quite well. So we have no ill will in that respect. The things that we want to bring up, uh, really uh, we're outlined in a letter that we were asked to, if we could submit and we did. And they're really concerns uh, based as being owners and, and property owners in that area because we're the ones that live at the end of the street and we're the ones that are directly affected by any and everybody that goes in and out of, out of that trail, road, whatever it's, it's deemed to be. I am aware, going back as far as 84, that that is somewhat of a trail or an access route or people have used it. I know it was the old preserve farm at the very end of the properties. I believe that's the one Clint now owns. Um, our issues really come around um, a couple of things as uh, the values of properties. Uh, when we purchased our properties, and we actually own two, we own the, the the second last lot, which, which our residence is on, and we bought that in 19, late 80s, and we officially moved into the residence in 1992. So we've been there since 92. Uh, approximately 15 to 20 years ago, we purchased the last lot on the street. Um, and now because we own both, they're somewhat conjoined. Um, at the time, we were told very clearly that um, those were the last two properties on 2nd Avenue that could be uh, lawfully developed and have a septic system put in. And we do. Uh, approximately half of the residents on that street have to have water and septic at their own cost because the water lines simply don't go down that far and the services are not there. Um, so we have concerns environmentally as to if more development takes place past our residents, well, firstly, um, I think we've heard tonight from several people that, well, it, it's a trail, it's not a trail, it's a concession road, it's not a concession road, it's an access road, it's no, it's a public road. I think in all respect, I asked that firstly, council determine lawfully what is it. And if it's a private drive or a private road, well, then it should be addressed as such and it can dealt with in, I believe you have provisions of the plan for that. Um, the water access uh, <laughs> provision to these properties uh, was of concern to us because, as we mentioned in the letter we submitted, it's just not practical. It's not really viable. Yes, you can technically say, and we've heard that tonight, that, well, yeah, there's water access there, so it meets a standard. Well, it's practical, it's not water access. And I can tell you, actually, for a fact, that the people going in and out of those properties are using Second Avenue. They, they drive past our residence. When we when, when we purchased um, that property and developed it, um, we found that, uh, of course, we were, we were paying high enough taxes for it. We did call over the years, and we have called a number of times, and, and talked to Impact about the assessments, because we are at the end of the dead end street. There's very few services. We don't have water. We don't have septic system. We don't have sidewalks. Um, and um, the result of it, when we discussed it, uh, they were we were bluntly told, well, you pay extra and you pay high for privacy. You're at the end of a dead end street, 
We have no neighbors except one direct neighbor beside us. We have no blindness, no one across the street from us. And you pay for that privilege. You pay extra for that. So my concern is if development occurs, well, and this may sound silly, but is 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 anyone going to come back for us when our taxes continue to keep going up and it's no longer the privacy we're paying for? Uh, we have that currently uh, up, up until now um, and we won't in the future. Uh, in addition, yes, there's been talk tonight about well, what kind of development is it going to be? Well, if you need, and I, there is a concern over um, what kind of structures are going to go in there. Uh, if they're million dollar residential properties, well, that'd be great. I don't envision that happening. Um, if you want an example of how things can get a little bit out of hand, um, my own respectful submission is put a boat in at Black Creek and go up the Spanish River towards the Narrow Center, and you'll see the area around Sand Bay where an entrepreneurial individual uh, seemed to have allowed people to put up every trailer they can find along the, along the riverbanks. And I think anyone who knows the area that's been there can see what I'm talking about. Now, is that all lawful? Is it legal? I don't know what requirements are being adhered to there, what standards are there, what environmental care has been taken. And I hate to see that happen where we are. Again, ultimately it's gonna affect us as property owners. So we have those, those issues. A number of years ago, um, I had the opportunity to participate in a, a tabletop emergency planning session for this municipality. And one of the issues that was on the table that time, and in fact the main scenario was a large fire down at the end of 2nd Street, and it was blowing uh, towards town and, and how to best deal with it. And, uh, and there was a concern, and there was a concern because of fire vehicles being able to get down there. I know the fire chief's not here tonight. Um, I would ask that you consult with him about that issue before you make a decision. Um, we know the fire hydrants. So currently, the one I'm aware of, the closest one is up at uh, near Gary Heron's residence. So it's quite a ways up. I think it's over 1,400 feet up the street from our residence. So there's no way fire hoses are going to get down into that area. So it's going to be fire trucks or tanker trucks. So what implications are going to come out of that? And has council looked at that issue before approving anything? I, I know you've heard tonight that, well, you can sign agreements and there's no liability. Well, that's easier said than done when something actually does happen. You are going to be on the hook and you are going to have to respond. And I'm talking about an emergency. We, a few years ago, we had a scenario, well, we had a real life incident where there was fire um, blowing uh, from the west to the east. And it was a sort of deep concern over um, residents and patients at the hospital. And I was personally involved in that. So, so I'd ask you to take those things into consideration. Um, in addition, um, just lost my train of thought here. Um, the um, the amount of equipment that's needed. Um, what's going to what's going to take place there to go in and out if if properties are developed and okay septic systems suddenly become allowed. My understanding where ours were the last properties that was was allowed to have septic systems. Now is that changing? Um, and in addition, um, the increased traffic. You've heard from several people that have spoke about you know, increased traffic on that street, and it's true. Um, we've seen it ourselves. Um, sometimes it's weekly, sometimes it's daily, and, uh, and it's going to, of course, increase. What about safety? There's no sidewalks on that street. There are, as, as time goes on, and we've been there for 30 years, as time goes on, you know, older people move or pass on, and younger families move in, and we're seeing that now, where there's more young children on the street than we've ever seen. So, and they do, and they go right past our residence and they're playing in the bush area. That is a fact. I know it, I see them every day. The last thing I've mentioned is, and it has been brought up already, is as you're aware, back in 1999, when the municipality annexed in Merritt Township, and became part of Espanola, 
the bylaw, firearms bylaw was not changed. It was not amended in the, the municipal bylaw for firearms use. So that old, what I call old merit, you were still allowed to, to hunt and fire and discharge firearms. Of course, provided you're meeting these you know, general safety standards and criminal code, but um, it was still allowed. So hunters, and I believe to this day, that's still in place. Now, and it's been brought up tonight again. What happens now? We are homeowners. We are concerned about discharge of weapons in the around proximity of the residences. Um, so far, uh, you know, we're, we're lucky there's no been a serious incident. What happens when it does occur? And is the is council going to you now reconsider this issue? So I ask that you look at all of those things. You look at property values. You look at this road. And I'm assuming from what we've heard tonight. One of the things that will have to be decided upon is what is the, what is the legal definition of this road, trail, access, public road, not a public road. I don't know. That's up to you folks to decide. And I am. I would like to see you define whether, in practicality, this water access is is actually viable. I know technically you could probably argue, yeah, you can drive a boat down the river and you can crawl up the bank, and there you are. In reality, we all know that's not the case. That's not what's going to happen. Maybe a few people down the road will put a trail down to the river so they can put their little boat in and go down the river, and that's possible. But as far as getting in and out of the properties, they're going to go down the second end. And that's the concern that we have tonight. So I ask, uh, I ask you to consider, uh, consider all of those things, and uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that is uh, wanting to speak on this issue? Uh, my name is Clint Penner. I own uh, 62 acres just west of uh, Jill's property. Uh, it is rural. Uh, I'm a taxpayer. As well, although I don't live there, but I do use the property. I use that road on uh, the end of the Second Avenue. I, any picture or map I've ever come across since investigating the property has shown Second Avenue ends right where my property begins. And there is a, it is an old farm. There is a trail going up the mountain. There are a couple of fields that used to be pasture. And down below where I have a trailer park, uh, right beside my trailer is a, a foundation of an old farmhouse. Uh, I can state for a fact that uh, the banks, there's a half a mile of uh, shoreline on my property. That is not 60 foot banks. There's spots that are 10 foot at best. Uh, <clears throat> as for baiting bears, I can contest that that does not happen. Uh, I live in uh, Balcarin, Sudbury, and yes, we've had more bears this season in our neighborhood than we've had in the past. Uh, as for Second Avenue leading up to the rural end of Second Avenue, West End. Well, my with my tape measure, I measure the asphalt at 25 and a half feet. That's at the end property. Closer to Lee Valley Road, it was 24 and a half feet. And uh <clears throat> Surrounding the residential area, I took measurements. St. Joseph Street, which also does not have sidewalks, 20 feet. Uh, Boys Street, pavement without curves, 28 and a half feet. That's a little wider. Sharness, I believe it is, Street is 25 and a half feet, the same as 2nd Avenue. And Watson Street, 24 feet, all with no sidewalks. But these are all feeder roads leading into the neighborhood, leading up to the end of Second Avenue. Now, I suppose 
These houses at the end of Second Avenue haven't been there forever. At one point, they got permits to cut the lots up and build houses. And I'm sure people closer to town were upset because their children used to build their tree forts in that bush where their houses stand now. So, like, I, I get it. People uh, don't like change, but change has happened. Uh, there was a few points I wanted to make, but I don't know if I can remember them right now. Uh, as for trailers, well, I don't think anybody's proposing a trailer park. I know I'm not, and I don't believe Jill is. Uh, now, I drive through the neighborhood, and there's many trailers parked on people's lots, or RVs parked in their driveways. And this is a small little lot. I currently have two trailers on 62 acres. I don't constitute that a trailer park. I'm using it for recreation. As for fires, we have a campfire we use. But many of the residents in the neighborhood that are speaking before you have campfires in their own backyards. Now, what I've seen since purchasing the property is at the end of Second Avenue, down at the end, we have a nice beach for swimming. That used to be the party spot for the younger people teenagers, what have you, in Espanola. And the first year or two, while we were cutting along, clearing, uh, we more or less stopped that from happening because we were worried campfires down at the beach, down at the rope swing, we were told, well, that was the party spot. Now, as responsible property owners, the last thing we want is fire. But, uh, so that's for that. Uh, as for hunting, we fall within the uh, ministry's guidelines. You cannot discharge a firearm more than 300 meters from a dwelling. But as responsible outdoorsmen, we know this. And uh, I guess that's all you have to say for now. As for services, well, we're rural. No, we don't have a fire hydrant out there, but what rural farms have fire hydrants parked in front of their farms. This was a farm. Purchase, the property I purchased was a farm. There's even, I'm told, an old well up in the pasture up the mountain that a horse had fell down and it got covered up and left there. That was uh, off the fellow that I bought the property off a few years back. But uh, there definitely was a dwelling and uh, the road's always been there. It never was maintained. I believe Jill's made it adamantly clear we're not asking for it to be maintained. But what Jill is planning on doing with three lots on this property and the clearing of the bush that he's done there, that's his own property. There's no law saying you can't clear some bush on your own property. And uh, this directly affects me because I'm the last property at the end of the road. There is nobody behind me with access. And I support you over his application. Thank you. Thank you. You may ask Washington to speak. Hi, my name is Dan Bouchard. I'm a potential buyer for Jill once if he's a lot to come. Uh, sellable. And the reason I'm here tonight is because I like the fact of what Jill is doing. 
I come from up north, five hours from here, and uh, I grew up in the bush. So I'm used to all these rural areas, no fire hygiene, you know, all these rules. And what I love from this, what he's doing with these lots is the fact that there's road access, you can go boat access, and I love fishing, I love hunting, and I'm planning on retiring out here in the near future. And one of those lots is potentially my retirement home. I'm looking to build. And I love the <laughs> fact that I can get on my boat and go right out to the Great Lakes. Like it's, it's phenomenal. So I'm here to back shield up on this and uh, hopefully it goes through. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. Gordon, did you have any final comments? I think a few more. Okay. Um, I don't know how busy this uh, council and planning committee are with respect to certain development applications. Comments by some with respect to some of the area residents uh, are, are pretty standard. I'm sure you've all heard increased traffic. We've got three lots. If you talk to a traffic consultant, traffic engineer, yeah, they might produce 10, move, 10 movements uh, a day. That's not a big deal. It's always a standard. A standard complaint about increased traffic. Property values. How hours three dwellings half a mile down the road are going to affect the property value? Come on. <laughs> and as far as the sign at the end of the road, that's not the right sign. The sign at the end of the road says it's an unopened municipal road. No maintenance beyond this point. It doesn't say no traffic on the road, no more traffic here. Um, as um, Mr. Penner said, he seemed to have this attitude that there was uh, <coughs> disturbance by clearing a few lots. That whole property was a farm. What's the problem with cutting a few trees? It's his lots. It's his property. You can build some spots where it clears some land where he wants. None of it's down by the river. It just seems like people <laughs> want to get on the no train. And, and, and some of these um, <clears throat> so that the, the there's no bylaw officer necessary because he drives down the road that everybody been driving down for a hundred years. Brush and debris. Well, people cut brush, they pile it up. Some of it's firewood. These are fire, for firewood. It's not a crime. Um, Spanish River, I mean, come on, how many million gallons of water do you buy that thing in a, a day? Three septic systems up on the hill, 100, yard, 100 yards or more from that river. It's not going to have any impact on the sense. Come on. I think I think council will re readily recognize that some of these complaints are beyond the realm of reality. Um, if there's ten more vehicles a day down that road and kids are playing on the sidewalk, how many there are already? On? How much traffic is already? Three houses down the road is not a traffic problem. Um, street lights. I don't know whether there's street lights on Second Avenue now. It doesn't sound like. Why would we have street lights back in the bush? Hunting is not a planning issue. There, I, I, I would suggest that there's no uh, impact on these applications. Waste management. The camp owners, 
will bring their garbage out to the municipal dump. To provide their own sewer and water services, private class four septic systems. There's no problem in our approval by Southern District Health. Here. The road's adequate. We can protect the municipality's concerns. I mentioned time and time again about. Increased demand for services. Three camps at the far end of that property, especially with our alternative recommendation that instead of um, instead of on page seven, um, the requirement for a for a as part of the, the alternative recommendation, take notice that those slot is water access only and the town does not recognize the slot as having any road access for construction or operation of the lot. Well, legally, you can't register an agreement <coughs> on land you don't own. That the, the road is owned by the municipality. You can't enforce an agreement by a uh, by a third party on that road. It's public road. It has been a public road, I'm going to repeat myself, for 110 years. People can drive down there. The traffic increase is not, is not significant. We're getting three lots. We haven't made three lots in the city all year. So we feel that, that there is an alternative recommendation that would, in lieu of number five, in the um, Alternative uh, proposal proposed by uh, Dale Richards in the recommendation at the end of the staff report that we enter into a, a tailored no demand for service agreement that speaks to some of these issues that uh, I may talk to. That, uh, that agreement can be, we've given you a generic one, can be tailored to provide the municipality with a level of protection that it deems necessary in order to permit. At least some development. The issue of what's going to go there has been answered. It's not a trailer park. We, this is only about a site specific, it creates three lots. They don't work. And that's what we're seeking this council to approve so that um, Mr. and Mrs. Larry can enjoy the property along with the people. I'd be glad to answer any questions of any members of the council. Are there any questions from council for anyone? I'd like to ask one. Is there any plan on doing any more uh, properties out there? Or? Well, it's been pretty hard to get to where we are, but he's been so far, sir. There isn't any plan at this time. No. How much more property? Um, I see there's a whole lot of property there that can be subdivided. And you could start a little village over there. Well, possibly, but. If if that should happen, and if these lots sell, we have one buyer. Um, we would have to come back to you, and you might say no. Um, but this approval only permits three lots. That's right. Any other development would have to be brought before you as well, uh, for your consideration at the time. Okay. They're not contemplated. He, he, may, he, he may want to hold the fire again. I'm not sure. <laughs> so we're only permitted three lots by the consent vote. That's right. You know, anything else a plan of subdivision? And I, I understand that the plan of subdivision that committee will also. So at this time, that's where we're at. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you. Uh, back to six weeks ago, I took a photograph of the sign at the end of the road. It says no motorized vehicle on the line. Sign of a change. That's the sign. Oh, that, uh, who, is that the town for that? I don't think I have a change. Mm -hmm. well, supposed to change, they call. <laughs> well, did you take the picture? 
I didn't take a picture. It was sent to me. Oh, your information's wrong. There's a sign that was there. Well, I always understood it was to be changed. Because that sign's not correct. That sign's not particular to the planning matters. Um, so one of the questions was asked about clearing of the land prior to having the zoning approval in place. And um, the town, so people are allowed to do some vegetation removal or site alteration of their lands. However, the town may have um, site alteration bylaws. I can defer on your hand. Mm -hmm. okay. That would cover um, vegetation. So some municipalities have bylaws, which kind of remove, regulate that. So in Eskimo, they do not have that in place. Um, in terms of the existing uses being there, so the shed and the trailer, which we noted on the site visit, um, the town may not have been aware of those uses until the site visit. And at this point, now that uh, the town is aware of them, they can decide if they want to, how they want to pursue uh, dealing with that from a compliance standpoint. Um, in terms of the note on the notice about an exception to section 3.9 of the zoning bylaw, um, that was required because in our um, understanding of the application and in our opinion, there wasn't any frontage provided to those properties on an approved road. Section 3.9 of the bylaw requires uh, properties to have frontage on an approved street. So it needed to include that exception. Um, in terms of the planned uses for the property, so the owner and applicant have provided some comments on that. In terms of the town's official plan, we noted that in the rural and waterfront areas, um, low density residential development and rec outdoor recreation uses um, are permitted, provided they meet the other policies of the plan and the um, provisions of the zoning bylaw. Um, uses such as a trailer park, um, mobile homes, or RVs um, would not be permitted um, under the current uh, provisions of the bylaw. In terms of future severances, I believe uh, the applicants, our representatives already answered that. So the official plan provides that severing of previously severed lots in the rural and waterfront areas is not encouraged. And as well, it limits uh, to a maximum of three consents for properties larger than 35 hectares. And so that answers a few of the questions provided. Um, I was also just going to maybe provide some concluding comments, if that's okay. Um, so the town has its official plan. Um, which follows with the provincial policy statement as well. And growth and development generally is directed to service areas of the municipality. These policies set out um, where and how development should take place in the town. Um, I do take issue with the assertion that nothing happens in Espanola and that you haven't seen applications before this council because I believe there has been fairly significant development applications which have met the policies, met the provisions, and we were able to recommend approval and council approve them. And that happened fairly recently. Um, the application before you tonight was submitted on the basis of water access, and that formed the basis of our review. Having seen the overland access during our site visit, we understood that there was the potential to have use um, access use of that access, and that came through in our comments and in the report. The information regarding that access as a public road status was only provided this evening, so we might recommend that the opportunity to review that information with the town. Um, notwithstanding the assertion that that access is a public road, there are still sections of the official plan which state that um, New development can occur on an improved public road, which is maintained year-round. So 
if it turns out that this is in fact a public road, there are still two other parts of that clause, which we feel are not met by that particular access. Okay. Um, so we do still feel that our recommendation at this point would remain the same, um, that the application based on the road would not conform to the initial plan. Thank you. I got a question. Yes. <laughs> In a case like this, then, if let's say we don't reach an agreement, this gentleman wants to put something there anyway. Isn't he allowed? It's his property. So, I mean, we can't stand in his way. The best we can do is say, look, we have no responsibility on this whatsoever. Whatever you do is on your own. Is that what I'm getting out of this? Okay. So, you still have the municipal zoning bylaw, which um, applies a particular zone to that property and to every property within the town of Espanola. So, despite people having ownership of their lands and thinking that they can do whatever they want or place whatever they want on it, there are bylaws and regulations that apply. So when someone um, goes to place something on the property, particularly if it's a building or structure, they need to come in to the municipality, present the plans that they're their proposed development, and the municipality through your chief building official will review that for compliance with the zoning bylaw. Um, some of the provisions of the zoning bylaw include frontage, so section 3.9 is frontage on an improved public road. Um, so we have to look at if that is a public road or not. Right now, it doesn't appear to be. Um, but it looks like that might not be met if they were to come in and apply for a building permit for the property. So again, once uh, if someone is looking to do something on any property in the town, they need to follow and meet the provisions of the town's zoning bylaw before they can be issued a building permit. Okay. Similarly with recreational vehicles, um, those are also governed by <coughs> townships or town zoning bylaw, and there are rules and regulations <coughs> where those can be placed, if they can be a primary use, or if they're accessory to a residential property. I don't have any questions. Uh, you, you may want to discuss and uh, work a path forward on to a decision, not tonight, but down yeah. the road. Um, at this point in time, this is not coming to a decision this evening. Um, it's going to be placed on the agenda of the November 26th meeting. And uh, at that point in time, this gives us additional time to ask questions, consider everything that has been said this evening. Um, both by J.L. Richards, by the applicant, and the representatives of the applicant, and, and the members of the community. So it will give council some additional time to digest that before we need to make a decision on this issue. I have one request for that meeting then on the 26th. I would like to, a definition of what the colonial road is. I really don't think at this point in time my understanding would be that it would meet the definition of a municipal maintained road. I also would like to see a report from the fire and the police department uh, regarding emergency access there. And the other uh, report, I'd like something from our uh, insurance regarding this, uh, any liability we would have with this uh, agreement if we were to uh, place on it. Because I believe as one of the uh, presenters stated, in any kind of emergency, uh, we are still going to be on the hook for whatever. So I'd like those uh, reports to be available for that meeting. Thank you. We will be receiving a staff report for that meeting and to help guide our final decision. So I'd like to uh, have a lawyer review the, all the information, uh, legal, and make some comments on the short-term and long-term implications of accepting and rejecting it just so that we understand what what that means oh isn't jl richards uh doing that for us right now they're planners they are they're not, they're not um, well no but they do know the, the rules yes. the regulations and i'm worried about if what what is the status of that road okay and what are the implications of it and i think we need a legal a legal assessment 
we've heard a legal assessment already, okay? But we'd like to have, I'd like to have the towns uh, get some legal advice in that area. And not just for the three lots, but what are the longer term implications if we were to prove it, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, I will deem the public uh, portion of this meeting to be closed, and then we will go on with uh, our regular agenda. says Roma Conference, Toronto, January 27, 29, 2018, or 2019. Is that 2020? <laughs> sorry, I don't know where you're at. Oh, I'm sorry, that was on page three. Um, no, I know, I just wanted to rectify it, because if I forget it, I believe yes, there's 2020. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good catch. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't tell where you were at. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are moving on to the consent agenda. Okay. Yeah, consent agenda. Uh, moved by Council of Announcements, seconded by Council of Chief Board. Eight resolved that items F1 to K2 inclusive campaign and part one consent agenda to be done. Okay, um, so we can move on. Uh, actually, before we move on, is there anything that anybody wants to submit at this time? Okay, so in, under the adoption of minutes, uh, we have uh, four meetings. We had a special meeting of council on October 22nd, the regular meeting of council uh, on October 22nd, special meeting of council after the council meeting on October 22nd, and a special meeting of council on October 23rd. Any questions or comments? Okay, board and committee reports. Uh, we have a pretty the whole meeting on October 22nd. Uh, there were no matters arising from any in-camera session, uh, and there was no business arising from boards and committees. So we'll move on to item J. It's our confirmatory bylaw. Um, that's standard on all of our meetings. And reports. We have a Board of Health for um, Board of Health for Public Health Sudbury District meeting minutes, October 17th. And we have the Town of Esco and Nonprofit Housing Corporation meeting minutes of September 3rd. Any comments or questions and those? Okay, so I will call the motion. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to a regular agenda. Okay, and on one by Council Foster, sent by Council Agency. We resolve that the submitted application meets the requirements of NGO's Connecting Links program as described in the program guide to a comprehensive asset management plan, including connecting links has been completed and publicly posted. Three, the municipality will comply with the conditions that 
applied to designated collect connecting links under the Highway Traffic Act to ensure the safe and efficient movement of provincial traffic. Or the project put forward in the application will be completed and the milestone met as stated in the application. And by the application is complete and factually accurate. Thank you. Any questions or comments? This is uh, for the uh, grant we got last year, or is this for the grant we're applying for? Yes, it's for the new application that's the one we So we're a little premature in saying the grant application is complete, so it's not actually due to the 22nd. Uh, but uh, our VA has been working on getting the application for us, and this is a requirement to accompany that application. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all well, in favor? And motion has been carried. We want to move by Councilor Ducasi, seconded by Council Foster, be it resolved that Council for the Town of Eskimo supports resolution number 533 2019 from the Town of Kingsville regarding local health care services as attached. And that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Board of Premier of Ontario, Christine Elliott, Minister of Health and Long Term Care, local MPPs, and the Board of Health for Public Health, Sudbury, and Districts. Okay, any questions or comments on this um, lengthy motion from Kingsville? Okay, I will call the motion. All in favor? Council, I three. Moved by Council Foster, second by Council Duplicate. Be it resolved that Council for the Town of Espanola hereby supports the resolution of the Town of Penetanguishim regarding municipal amalgamation as attached, and that a copy of this resolution be sent to Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Christine Elliott. Deputy Premier, Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs, and the Orkorla, leader of the NDP, all MPPs in Ontario, and beyond. Any questions or comments on this motion? So this is just in support of the motion from um, the town of Penetanguishim on uh, municipal nomination. Uh, all in favor? Okay, that has been carried. Okay, uh, we had no uh, items for correspondence in terms of information only. We do have a number of things that have been supplied uh, for information to us. Um, so those are all listed in the agenda. If anybody has any questions, please make sure that you are contacting myself or town staff for any clarification on those. Um, Roma conference, is this the one that you were talking about? The, the date of the Roma conference? Yes. Yeah, Jan January 27 to 29, 2020. You did find it. I did find it. I got <laughs> there eventually. Um, is there anybody that is planning on going to that conference or doing an event? I went last year, so I don't particularly be anymore this year. Okay. Any, anybody else interested? <clears throat> Do we know a deadline for registration for that? Or I think we can register right now. Yeah, until the conference. Okay. Um, I'll wait and see if we have anything that, that we need a delegation for before I check that on the other one. Okay, so we'll move on to mayor and council reports and announcements. So I will start with Deputy Mayor Foster. I was at the Remembrance Day ceremony, okay, and uh, there were quite a few people who braved the very cold weather. That's all I have. <laughs> it was. It was cold. It's been cold. Uh, Councilor Dubusi. And Elsie Aaron. Councilor Benelson. Uh, I was at the uh, nonprofit housing meeting last Monday. Um, it was a, a good meeting. We. Um, one of the things towards the end is the library is going to bring in the uh, possibility of people being able to go in and uh, order books and uh, do an exchange right at the hospital. Um, 
actually Jeremy is, he was uh, a volunteer and he's looking at starting. Uh, they were talking about their end of term for their uh, operating agreement. And the next one is in March, no, January. Thank you. Uh, the other thing is also, I will not be here for the uh, meeting on November 26th. Okay, thank you. Councilor Newport? Uh, I have nothing. Thank you. Councilor Moore. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, in terms of, I was not able to go to the Remembrance Day in public um, ceremony simply because it is not the holiday of the school. We had our Remembrance Day ceremony on, on Friday, and it, uh, it always is a moving ceremony. Um, the other thing is, when we had uh, the last public services meeting, I attended a, a conference call via the phone on um, the concerns over Premier Ford's, um, Premier Ford trying to approve landfill sites uh, without having municipal say. So it was very enlightening. There's lots of information on uh, a website. I can provide that website to you. I think we have added in previous information. I just can't remember the website off the top of my head, but I can have that sent to you for sure uh, if there's anything else. It was basically a listening conference call from the central government, but there sure is a lot of information out there on that. And a lot of municipalities are um, requesting that we as a municipality have some say in terms of where um, Premier Ford wants to put these in their mm -hmm. Um I have no other comments other than that. Uh, we have um, our future council meetings are all listed in our agenda packages. So our next meeting of the whole meeting is on November 26th, week prior to our regular council meeting. 19th? Uh, no, the, our, I, I skipped that. Oh. A regular hours or the next regular council meeting. So just know that we'll be starting at 6 p.m. Uh, and then we do have community services next week on Tuesday at 4. Okay, we will have uh, we have a motion to close, moved by Council Dickesy, second by Council Foster at the regular meeting of Council Tiller and then we have 846. And all in favor? Okay, that has been carried.